welcome everyone. Um, I'm so excited to welcome Stacey Marie back to Solid to be our guest trainer once again. Um, when I wanted to talk about selling in stories, um, mainly because it's not something that I teach because I don't feel like I have mastery over it. Uh, it's not something that I can honestly say I've had a whole lot of success with. Um, despite trying a few different things, I probably haven't been as consistent as what I should be. Uh, but I know that Stacey is amazing at doing this, but also an amazing, um, amazing at explaining how to do it. And, you know, I think her strategy is just so succinct and clear, but it's also, you know, it's also really it's just honoring and authentic. And that's always what I love about Stacey's work. So um, Stacey, thank you so much for being here. Welcome once again. Thank you for having me. I feel very chuffed that I'm like actually been invited back twice. So that, that means that the first one must have been okay. We like you. We like you here. <laughs> very excited. Yeah, yeah. Feedback um, in the group. I think there's some new faces since last mm. I was here though I was trying to remember when the last one was it was definitely earlier this year but I can't recall what month it was so um, for those of you that haven't met me I'm Stacey um, I am a social media coach and also manager now um, I've transitioned my business a bit this last year the joys of you know a pandemic and um, the uh, the need to ever evolve our businesses <laughs> I was predominantly, uh, actually was fully 100% um, coach um, and like course creator over the last few years. And then this year I've transitioned a lot into social media management and done for you sort of services. But, you know, as it turns out, the thing that you resist sometimes is the thing that you end up loving. Um, so it's actually been a really great journey to... Um, a great journey of evolution to try something um, you know, really, which was out of necessity because I was like, I need to create more income and then go, I can't believe I didn't do this sooner. Um, and it was just, it's been a really good, really good journey of exploring why did I actually resist it for so long? I'm not disappointed that I did. I'm, I don't have any regrets of what I've done over the last five years. But anyway, I'm really enjoying it. Um, and also too, I think for me, in terms of my practice of, you know, being up to date with social media strategy and trends and what's working, actually doing it for people has helped me really stay on the pulse with it, which has been great. Um, where sometimes when you're a coach, it's um, not, I wouldn't say easier. It, I think as a coach, it can be harder to stay up to date with trends because you're teaching it, but you're not maybe necessarily having to do it every day. Does that make sense to you, Shaz? Like yeah, you've got to be very conscious about making sure you're up to date you're with everything because you're not yeah. doing it every day. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely um, probably in the last couple of months that I've been quite consciously aware of that because yeah. I've been consuming less social media content. So, um, you know, there was a recent Instagram um, announcement and I was like, oh, I missed that far out. Like I've taken yeah, my on. finger off the pulse. You don't go on there for five days, you miss 10 up updates to Instagram <laughs> at the moment anyway. Yes, so. <laughs> that's true. That's 2022 in a nutshell, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, no, I definitely can relate to that. It's, you know, it, because it's, again, it's finding that balance between working on and working in your business and working on is always spending that time to upskill ourselves as coaches and as yeah. teachers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in terms of selling, so obviously the whole purpose of this is talking about selling on stories in terms of selling um, my experience in sales is very long and extensive I spent 17 years in finance before I started my own business um, and that was all in people leadership and very much in a very sales KPI focused um, workplace um, and what I feel I've been able to do is kind of extrapolate the parts of selling that I feel are authentic and that work and that are good and that feel good um, and leave the kind of shitty corporate -y kind of stuff behind <laughs> and bring that over. Um, I actually did a podcast episode on Sharon's podcast on needs-based selling. So um, if you guys want to like kind of have a bit of a bit more of a feel of how my sales process works, 
that episode's a really good episode to go through. I've also got um, on my own podcast, on the Social Hub podcast, I've got a four-episode series on needs-based selling as well. So my approach to selling is very much needs-based, as in what does the client need, but also being able to extrapolate out like what is your process, what is your method, what is the outcome that they're wanting to achieve and then what is the transformation, but also what's the fastest way to get them there uh, for them and also for you because I'm in the same boat as all of you guys. None of us have time to be on social media 50 hours a week. Um, We've all got businesses to run, we've all got families and we've all got other things to do. So um, a lot of my sales process and strategy that I teach and that I do for my clients is really based around like getting to the heart of it as quickly as possible, um, but also covering off those core points that we need to cover off, which is the challenge of the client, the outcome, the transformation, and also your method. Um, so we'll go through all of those things today. Um, I've also, you know, it's kind of hard to just go through just selling on stories. So there's a little bit of just stories overall stuff in there. And then there's a bit of kind of salesy strategy as well in there. But there's some other um, things you can go and have a look at in terms of sales strategy that will help you. Um, cool. All right. I think we'll just get stuck in. Can I share? Yeah, you sure can. Awesome. All right. Now everyone should be able to see that. Cool. All right. So please feel free to be interactive um, with this, guys. Just I'll I'll check the chat box um, occasionally. Please just pop anything in the chat box you want. Shaz, maybe if you keep an eye on the chat box too, if anyone's got any specific questions. Um, as we're going and I'll I'll obviously open up for question time at the end too. All right, let's get stuck in. Um, So I just thought I'd start with some stats because I love to kind of extrapolate out some stats um, as to why would you bother to show up in stories and sell. Um, So I guess while I'm going through this, what I would love everyone to do, if you could pop into the chat box for me, is like where would you rate yourself on your use of stories currently um and like how do you use them currently and like just be honest like if you've really got no idea on how to use them just say that like it's totally fine we can be honest here we're in a safe space um and yeah kind of let me know like kind of how you rate yourself and how you use them currently and I guess like what are your big challenges with stories and particularly selling in stories maybe some of you haven't even tried to sell in stories and that's totally cool too so basically with stories we all know they're a huge part of Instagram but here's some stats that might kind of I guess wet your whistle to try and be excited about them um 50 million accounts use stories daily 58 percent of users say they're more interested in a brand after seeing it in a story um brand stories have an 86 percent completion rate which if you don't know what that means it means you know how when you go into stories and you can kind of cancel out of the story sequence so uh completion rate means that someone's actually viewed all of your stories so if they haven't actually like cancelled out on that slide and that's actually in your stories insights if you go into your insights it will tell you who's actually left your stories on that particular stories like Um, that particular story so if you've got 10 and people cancel out on eight it's not completed right it's only completed if they've looked at them all so brand stories have an 86 percent completion rate the most active brands post 17 stories per month and instagram stories generated a quarter of the platform's ad revenue last year so um the reason for all of this is that it's really some of it is platform led some of it is user led so the platform led stuff is that Stories are at the top of the feed. They're easy to see, right? So you can see them. They're at the top. They're easy to find. You go onto the thing and on, onto Instagram and it shows you at the top before you even get to the feed. They're all across the top. Now, with stories, if it's got the red circle around it, it means that that person has added a new story recently. So if you interact and look at people's stories, you will probably notice that those people who you do interact with 
when they post a new one, that little red circle gets pushed up to the front of your stories feed. That's kind of how the stories algorithm works. If people don't add to their stories, then it stays gray because you've already watched them all and they get pushed further back down into the stories algorithm. If you're on a closed friends list or a close friends list, that's a green circle. They do get bumped up as well. Um, so basically the platform will prioritize stories content, but from a user led point of view, people just love stories because it's day to day stuff. So there's really been a big distinction I've found on Instagram with feed content versus stories content. Now reels has made feed content a bit more native and a bit more natural. Um, but of course, brands still need to have a certain amount of professionalism on the feed, right? Cause it is a bit of a, you know, for some brands, it's like a portfolio of their work. Um, you know, it really showcases your business as a brand. Whereas the stories we can, you know, you can afford to be a little bit more relaxed. You know, you can be on your couch or at the beach or whatever. Um, and it really just gives people that more real life um, peek into what your business is like, um, which really goes to show that that like very TikTok style real style, natural, more organic native content is what is working at the moment. Um, I do believe that as a brand, we still need to have branded content that sets us apart as a business and as a brand, 100%. Um, but the good news is that because all this native stuff is working so well, um, that, you know, you can afford to use a few selfies here and there. And you don't, you know, although, you know, having professional images is important, but you can afford to have not have to have videographer quality videos, which is great too, I think. Um, okay, what's everyone said here? Um, terrible, need to learn, that's okay. Four out of 10, zero out of 10. I love the honesty. Starting, so need to learn. Stories are fun, have zero strategy. Poll, sharing post. I know I don't story tell enough, find it contrived. Yes, I understand that. I think I think the reason why you can feel contrived in that is because we see examples of people that do it in a really icky way, you know, and it's like you can tell they're trying to sell you something instead of trying to add value. Um, I'm lame at stories. I use them to show me behind the business, promote a post. Yep, cool. I enjoy them. Awesome. Selling them right, like sharing what I'm doing, having links to my circles, sharing stories of personal stuff. Yep. Yeah, perfect. And stories is a great place to share, share personal content because it, you know, it is only for 24 hours. Um, six out of 10, that's good. Yeah. Yep, yeah, 17 a month, totally. Um, adding music. Yep, yeah, cool. All right. Okay, so the thing I'd say is you don't need to do 100 stories a day. That's 100%. You do not need to do that. Um, so why do stories work? And remember, we're talking about from a selling point of view, like why selling on stories work. So one of the big reasons why selling on stories works is that your warmest audience actually live there. So when you go onto your stories, um, I don't know if any of you actually look at it or not, but I look at it all the time. How many people are viewing your stories? So if you swipe up on your story, it will tell you how many people have viewed it. Now, stories views are not as high as they used to be. I'll be perfectly honest. Like um, I've got nearly 3,000 followers and on a good day, I might get 200 views on a story, right? Um, but again, yes, some of that may be algorithm led. I mean, the algorithm such a beast, who would really know? But the the main reason I think is that it's user led. So people that want to engage with you are looking at your stories consistently. So your warmest audience live there. So if you've got consistently, you know, 10% of your audience looking at your stories on a frequent basis, that 10% is your warmest audience. So from a selling perspective, it makes sense that if your warmest audience are looking at your stories, that that is a place where you should be selling because they're further down that um, you know, that funnel in terms of social media and social media is very much micro level, but from a, you know, say you've got 2000 people, if you've got 200 people looking at your stories, and if you go through and actually look at the people watching your stories, you'll probably find a lot of them are the same people. So if that's the case, they are your warmest audience, which means that 
you've got some really quick wins that can be made in stories in terms of converting people into a conversation or a sale or a lead or an email subscriber. The other reason it works is it's a great place to build a relationship because you can do that more native, you know, day-to-day -day stuff, sharing little bits and pieces that you can't do on a feed, right? And, you know, really, you don't... you you only really need to do three to five posts a week these days. You don't need to do a daily post. I mean, you can if you want, but, you know, three to five at a minimum is perfectly fine. Whereas stories are a great way to be more active more often and help you build that relationship. The other thing with stories is they drive a conversation, which then drives a conversion because stories lead directly to a DM. So they're the main reasons why selling on stories work. For your audience, Again, you can nurture them and build that relationship on stories that you just can't do on the feed. Um, there is a real ease of direct contact from a story. So in terms of driving a conversation, you just have to say to someone, DM me and just point to the little chat box down below in the story and they can instantly send you a message. When they're on your profile and they're reading a post, they've got to come off the post into your profile, find the link in your bio, or find your DM button. There's like a few steps that they have to take. And this is something I spoke about on the podcast with Sharon was that we want to make, we want to kind of remove as many barriers as possible from people being able to connect with us. Um, and some people will take the steps. They'll take the steps to go to your bio and book in a discovery call and do that. Those people are the minority. They're the hottest lead you've got, right? But the, the other people, the warm people that are, they're kind of 80% there, but they're not 95% there. We need to remove as many barriers as possible. So stories are great because they can just go straight into a DM. There's also more options for engagement. So, you know, people don't have to comment on a, a story now. They can just engage in a poll or a question and, you know, things like that. So there's, it's, can be a lot more engaging than a feed post, definitely. And a little bit more private too, which some people really like. Um, just going to check, check the chat box. Dropped off massively in a second. Oh, do you mean stories views dropped off? Yeah, yeah. massively. Yeah, I know. They have. But I think if you go and have a look, most of the people watching will be the similar people, which means they are your warmest audience, which is a good thing. So then the next thing is I usually get from people, yeah, that's great, but where the hell do I start? So captions, graphics, videos, stickers, hashtags, highlights, like what do I actually do and how do we drive sales? So I'm going to just really focus on today three core things. So stories are, you know, there's so many features available in them now, but what I really want to cover off is three strategic ways that you can create content that will drive a sale. Now, the reason for that is I just don't think it's valuable for me to spend 10 minutes showing you to how, to, how to add a caption. Um, you can learn that really easily. It's actually not that hard to do. What is going to be better for us to spend our time in is what is the strategy? What is what works? What is the method that you can then go and employ? And if there's any how-to stuff, by all means, please reach out to me or reach out to Sharon in the membership and, you know, more than happy to help, you know, ad hoc with that sort of thing as well. So the three things we're going to talk about is branded hero content, talking videos and social proof. So if you can be consistent with these three core pillars in your stories each week, then you're going to definitely drive leads, whether it be email subscribers or leads to a service or, you know, getting people onto your website or a sales page, depending on what your overall strategy is. So the three, the things you really need to know before we get, you even get started creating stories content, you need to know what your promotional rhythm is. So do you talk about promotional rhythm in the membership? Yeah, I do in terms of my um, four, three, two, one and done. So basically out of say in a fortnight, you would be looking at at least one promotional post in a fortnight if you're doing five posts a week. Yeah. So, and of course, the overall planning of when you're launching and things like that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So from a content creation perspective, um, overall, I would normally recommend plan your promotional rhythm. You may have something different, Shaz, and by all means, you guys listen to what Shaz says. She's your mentor here. But I normally say like three months 
at a minimum to plan out your promotional rhythm from an overview so that you know what you need to create. If you've got a webinar coming up in a month, you need to create some posts and some stories and some emails about that. If you've got a launch coming up next month, you need to create posts and emails and stories about that. If you're doing a Black Friday sale, that's next Friday. You need to be creating the content now. So um, your over, overarching kind of, you know, promotional rhythm, three months. Look, I don't do longer than three months myself. Um, only because I find I can go to plan something to happen in nine months and then decide I don't want to do it. So <laughs> some people are really good at planning out 12 months and sticking to that plan. I'm not one of those people, so I stick to my strengths. Um, but what is your promotional rhythm? And then when you go to create your content, you know, do you do, how much do you do at a time? Making sure that you're creating content that, you know, is based around that promotional rhythm. Then your content pillars. So Content pillars are the things that you share consistently on your socials. Um, and I've included as a bonus my social strategy and content planning guide, which will actually go through content pillars for you if you, you haven't been exposed to that before. But Shaz, you probably talked about content pillars, I'd say. Yeah, I talk about the three to five things that they talk yeah. about on the internet and covering yeah. off, you know, the educational, fun and engaging, those sorts of um, different areas as well. Yeah, cool. Um, and then, so then once you know what those things are, that's like very much like, that's like in a nutshell, in a five second explanation, what you do in your overall social media. Then on stories, you're going to drill down into what out of that are you going to share on your stories? And then what will you drive on stories? So remembering with selling that we want to be consistent so you're not going to sell three things in a in a week it's not consistent for your audience they're going to get confused so if you you know promoting a webinar or you're promoting your lead magnet or you're promoting a, a service offer you promote that thing on your feed stands to reason you're going to promote that on your stories as well in terms of selling and then you know, how are you going to drive it? What's the best way that you will drive it? Do you want them to DM you? Do you want to put a link sticker on? Do you want them to answer a question sticker and then you'll talk to them privately? Like what's the best option for you? In terms of answering that question, I would say, what is the way that you make sales in your business now? So do you make sales by driving people to a landing page and then they buy the thing off the landing page? Or do you make sales from discovery calls and one-on-one -on -one conversations? Whatever the answer to that is, is what you're going to do on your stories. It's it really, it really as simple as that. So if you're selling something that requires them to go to a sales page, use the link sticker. If you're selling something that requires them to talk to you, get them to DM you or use a question sticker. Like that's how really how you're going to look to how you're going to, you know, the call to actions that you're going to use and the engagement sort of features you're going to use on stories too. Can I just chime um, in there, Stace? That's really interesting and actually uh, it's just been a light bulb for me because that's confirmation for me as to why I feel like I'm failing on stories but probably actually not um, and that's because whenever I used the DM me or you know like comment below or those sorts of things and I don't get a whole lot of responses it, it, the thing is, is the way that I sell best is through discovery calls. That's when people join my program. And, and so that, like, I've probably been making up a story in my head that I'm having, you know, I'm not having success in stories, but in actual fact, when I use the call to action of book a discovery call, it works. So yeah. there you go. Yeah, yeah. And you could either do that with a link sticker directly to the discovery mm. call, or you could just say DM me and let's book one in. And I would mm. probably recommend alternate between the two because some people will go to a booking link. Some people will want to talk to you directly. Just covers mm. off your bases for both. So yeah, really. Light bulb. Yeah. And, and, and I guess that's how simplistic sales needs to be, right? Like stories are micro content. If you're making sales in one way, just translate that over to your stories. We don't need to overcomplicate it any further. So it, what this means, then people sometimes, obviously, when you get stuck into this, people go, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to sell in my stories. Uh, no, you still need to sell on your feed. It's really important that you do that um, and that you follow a good strategic process in terms of creation of feed content. But this is really about knowing what to share, what to share in your stories that will utilize the traffic there and like how you're going to share it and what people are going to respond to. 
So the reason it goes wrong is threefold. There's no strategy. Like 100%, I can say 99% of the time, most of my clients do not have a content problem. They have a strategy problem. Um, I've got a lot of, most people I know are reasonably good at creating content. They're very passionate about their businesses. They just don't have a strategy. So definitely that's one reason it goes wrong. The other one is there's, in terms of sales, there's no promotional rhythm. So you're trying to send people somewhere, but you don't really know where because you haven't actually mapped out the thing that you're going to be selling. Um, maybe it's because you're resistant to being organized or to process, or whatever it is, but the promotional rhythm is 100% the key. Um, and then lack of consistency. So, you know, one post is not going to drive 300 email subscribers. <laughs> like, it's just not going to do that. Oh, Kaja's here. Hello, Kaja. Um, so, can be, yeah. Emotional rhythm can be last minute. Yep, 100%. And then like people think about it too late. Yeah. And, you know, they're promoting something with like less than a week before it and then wondering why it doesn't go so well. Absolutely. There's been no build up. So, yeah. you know, that's why with launching Stace in here, I teach basically to start three months out yeah. in effect. Yeah, perfect. And that is a really good point that Sharon makes as well is that, Another reason where promotional rhythm falls over is it's like, oh, I've got a sale tomorrow. Okay, well, we needed to build up to that. You know, it's like even with Black Friday sales, right? Like, yeah, they're only next week. Look, in, in saying that, I'm not, I would, I did a post about this yesterday. If you can put an offer out, put it out if you want to, if it aligns to you, 100%, you can maximize it. But the, the, the strategy with Black Friday is build your email list for three months before. That's the strategy with it, right? So I didn't do that. I'm probably not going to maximize my Black Friday sales as much, but I'm still going to do it, right? But, you know, definitely promotional rhythm is the key. And then lack of consistency of executing it. Um, Cindy has a question. Sure, Cindy, you can come off mute or type it. Hello. Thank you for Hi. that. Hello. I have um, like monthly circles that are online and I also do a monthly circle that is face-to-face. -face. And I, uh, I do um, the consistency. I can hear the consistency. And I've always sort of wondered, you know, because I am regularly holding them, you know, should I scatter it through the week or do I just do the week leading into the um into the circle I'm just sort of wondering in terms of what a rhythm could look like on those regular things that I do it's not a launch as such it's just yeah, completely yeah. in my schedule yeah yeah how many times do you run them once a month once a month or two because I have a face-to-face -face and an online one now okay so there's two so two a month two a month and um how, like what's the capacity like like are they full they're not full 80 percent 50 percent 50 percent 50 percent might and, be like a little bit there. And like what, are they run like different times of the month? or No, so when I say 50%, I think I, I in a full circle, I would, you know, I think I had seven as my people that I, I felt like I could hold that. Yeah. And I've had uh, four as a maximum of that. So okay. probably 50% is okay. And onlines can be a little bit higher. It all depends yeah. on the month. Yeah. And it is, as you know, Sharon and I have talked about this a lot because it is actually just for a period of time that you have them while they're pregnant and then they have the baby. And you, so there's this kind of lead in on um, getting the pregnant, continually getting the pregnant people through. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you, um, do you do any other services other than your circles? Um, yes, I offer doula services. Okay. And yeah, and one on ones as well. I also sort of do birth support in a one on one capacity. Okay, okay, cool. So I'm just trying to get a feel for like, is this the primary thing you're selling? Or is there other things that you're selling? It is at the moment, it is. And it was always going to be the strategy that the um, the circles would lead into the doula clients, because that's where you're building relationship with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's it, like, I would say the circles are part of the value ladder too. Like, you know, they come for that. Am I right? Like, I don't under, don't know your business, but could they go from a circle to a one-on-one -on -one client? Is that a yeah? They absolutely could. There's okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I just I don't know your business, so I'm just yeah. trying to get a, a feel for it. Um, yeah. So I think like in terms of something like a circle, 
some of that, particularly an in-person one, would be what I would call capacity marketing. So I've got, we've got, you, you know, you do your things around, we've got our two circles this month. Here's the face-to-face one. Here's the online one. I've got seven spots available. And then you update people on your stories about how many spots are left. So you can create that kind of urgency as well. Um, and, you know, I would be doing putting something up every week about them. If you're running two a month, you could be doing a s- stories every week about those and you could be doing posts about them look you could probably post once every fortnight about them as well just remembering that you've got the reason I would say that is because it is capacity based and it's time bound um, instead of one-on-one where people can probably come in pretty much at any time because you can stagger them Um, so yeah you can you can definitely afford to be and, and what you might want to do is if you're like trying to say, say you're doing a launch event to get people into your one-on-one service, you might focus more on that in your feed, right? And and you might just, you know, maybe smatter in the circles in your stories, right? So that's how you could you might be able to do it that way. Um, without doing a full marketing strategy for you, it's hard to say, but um, they're the sort of things I would probably look at. But some of the things I'm going to go through will help as well with how to, how to manage that too. Um, so in terms of overcoming these issues, so strategy, you know, have one promotional rhythm, map one out and consistently be consistent as possible and schedule. You can schedule stories now, guys. So please like by all means, try and do that as much as possible. Um, some other important notes about stories are frequency. So daily, if possible, at a minimum on the days you post. So I recommend posting at a minimum three times a week. So even if you just show up on your stories those three days, that's going to be enough to get. And if you're doing it strategically, you're going to see more results. Um, Quantity, less is actually more on stories at the moment. Like one to five is the sweet spot. More is okay if it's valuable, but you certainly don't have to. But I will put a little caveat in there when you're doing talking stories Think to yourself, could this be a feed video? If you're going to talk, like stories are 60 seconds each now. If you're going to talk for five minutes, maybe you should have just done a reel or done a talking video or something and put it on your feed and then share that to your stories, right? Because there's nothing worse than going on someone's stories. They've got 50 stories of them talking and you just lose, you just lose interest, to be honest. Um, so yeah, really think about that. Um when you're doing talking stories, schedule. This will help with consistency. Plan, 100% plan as much as you can ahead. Um, And touch points. So the thing I want to make about touch points is, so touch points is a marketing term for how many times people need to see your thing before they take action. Now, back in, say, 2019, it was, they used to say it was like five to seven, but it was starting to ramp up pre-COVID to like even around 13 I would estimate now, and Sharon, I would love to get your guesstimate on this too, because it is definitely an estimate, but I would say touch points could be anywhere from 15 to 20 in our Maybe current even market. more. Yeah. Which, Maybe even more. And I yeah. wouldn't, I don't say this to stress or overwhelm you guys. What I say this to do is to reiterate that it's okay to say the same thing over and over and over again. Like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to come out and say it. Sometimes in business, you feel like you're just trying to find a new way to polish a turd, right? Like (laughs) you just, it's just like, how do I say the same thing over and over again? And it can feel really frustrating, but it's only frustrating to you because your audience may have seen it five times because everyone's so digitally exhausted now And they're seeing such, it's all new every day. It's a new video, a new post, a new story about something new. People are very overwhelmed. So when I talk about branded stories content in a sec, I mean, create a whole bunch of slides, share the same slides over and over and over again. That's actually just going to help you convert because it, it embeds the consistency of the message. They see the same image. They see the same words. They see the same thing over and over again. Then they finally get it. It's the same with your kids, you know? Just know. with that too, Stace, I think, you know, I know that there's some people in here who are still nailing that store, like that, those words. Yeah. So make sure that they're words that stick. But once you've found them, like hang on to them like 
a grim life because yes. Stacey's absolutely right. Once you've found them, I just want to drop in a little example here. Stace, we had um, a lady who talks about paid speaking, paid to speak, Jamie Abbott, um, in here as a guest presenter a couple of months back. And um, for those of you who have been following Jamie since, she just finished her launch two days ago, I think, for Paid to Speak, the, the next round. Um, I heard this morning it was a $44,000 launch. Wow. Now, she has been going live something like five times a day during her launch. She has been everywhere. And one of the things that she said this morning is that there were still people even at the end going, oh, so when does your program launch? Yeah. <laughs> so she was just beating that drum and beating that drum and beating that drum. Her last launch was 30000 and Stace, that was her first launch ever, was the $30,000 launch. And now she's Amazing. gone with a $44,000 launch. So, um, you know, I think it is really important. I mean, what could Jamie honestly have been saying that was different when she's going live five times a day? Like Nothing. there's going to be rehashed content there, 100%. lots of it rehashed. And, you know, the feedback that I heard her given from Tina Tower this morning was, you know, how concise and clear Jamie's website is. And it is, I have to agree, I've actually modelled my new website off her website. <laughs> um, you know, really looking at, you know, not, not all of it, but looking at, you know, the placement of words and things like that and applying what I know about um, website development and conversion. But, you know, it's really, really interesting for her um, to, to see how much she's shown up. Now, I'm not going to recommend that. I think my nervous system would well and truly be in oh, overdrive. Amazing. Um, I, it's not my way to launch. But let me tell you, um, you know, I guess the, the reason that I, I just wanted to share that is I can't stress enough and reinforce what Stacey's just said about keep, when you find that message, keep delivering it over and over and over and over it's so yes. important even down to and you'll see this in a sec when I give you examples of branded slides even like the graphics of your program like if you've got certain colors and graphic elements that you use on your landing page put them on your posts put them on your stories share the same thing over and over and over again so it embeds in people's mind that that's what that is it will take them ages for it to sink in but that's what happens. It's like, you know, when you're teaching your kids how to walk or ride a bike, you go over the same process over and over again. And our instinct is when something's not working is to try something new. The best thing you can do is double down on continuing to refine the same process until it works, particularly when in terms of messaging. Um, so this is going to make more sense in a sec. So I'm just going to get straight into it and show you. So hero content, um, and this is one of the three core things I, I recommend you do, and these are things I create for my own clients. So hero content is branded story slides for your core offers. So your service, your program, your lead magnet, um, if you're capacity-based, your availability. So with your circles, um, Cindy was, I think that was the lady's name, heard the circles, Cindy. Um, if you do one-on-one, -on -one, uh, VIP days, anything like that where you're capacity based for availability. You need to follow a sales copy process. I've actually written the steps down for you guys to keep as well. Um, and these are static images that you can reshare over and over as needed. So that's really, again, embedding that, that messaging that people can see visually as well as um, the words that they would read. So I'm just going to, I just have a whole heap of examples. I'm just going to go through and show you so you can visually see what this could look like. So these are all ones I've done for my own clients. I've just dropped them into the presentation for you. So this is a set of sales stories for a free trial. It's only three stories. Um, as you can see, we've got book a free trial, check out our intro. Oh, it's not a free actually. It, actually, it's a paid, not a free trial. But anyway, that's my error there. Book a trial, check out our intro offer. Here it is. Here's where it's how long it's valid for. Book now. See you in the studio. This is for Pilates studio. And we've got little bits here to add the link sticker in, right? So we, I know I need to add the link sticker in if I'm posting that or she needs to add it in if she's posting it. Um, so it's not an extensive amount of slides. It's only three, but it 100% works, right? 
Now, these are sales stories for a membership pricing, same Pilates studio. Um, so like when I came in and started managing her content, one of the first things I did was go and create all of these stories for all of her classes, her, her program, like her timetable, um, her membership prices and all of that. So we could schedule it in every week, right? And people could see it. So this is an example of her membership stories. So it just says our packages and pricing, there's something for everyone. And it just goes through each of them. And there's a little thing there to remind us to add the link sticker on when we do it. So, you know, people get a, a feel for how much it's going to cost for them to come and be a member at the studio. Um, oh, now why has it gone back to that? Okay. So this is a set of slides for a coaching package. So this is a one on, this is a one off like power hour session. Um, and this one's a bit more extensive. This follows an actual sales process, which I've written down for you guys in, a, in the slides. And I've actually, I've given you guys a copy of these slides. So you can go back and refer to these if you need to, because you're going to need to have it written down in front of you if you want to follow it. Um, so you can see these ones, they're branded really nicely. Um, you know, it takes people through a process. So it you know, kind of explains their challenge, what they would want to achieve. Um, what's included, what they can cover off in those sessions, um, who the coach is, the transformation statement, and then book now. And these can be scheduled in, in stories every single week, like over and over and over again um, for them. Now, this was one for a lead magnet, for a new client that had a lead magnet. So it was a um, dairy-free recipe ebook. She's a um, nutritionist for mums that have children with allergies. Um, so this was really simple. Again, it was a free lead magnet. So it was just three slides, free ebook, make breakfast easy with these yummy recipes. Great for the whole family, right? And then the call to action. Obviously, you know, here's the thing with scheduling. If you schedule in Meta, your stories. So the new update to Instagram allows you to schedule feed posts, carousels and reels, but not stories yet. I'm hopeful Instagram will allow on-platform story scheduling because you can schedule stories in face like Meta Business Suite or Facebook Business Suite, but you can't add a link sticker or a question sticker and you can only add a poll sticker. It's really freaking annoying, to be honest. Um, so these are good because it just says head to the link in my bio. You can schedule them in. If you want to post them with a link sticker, you're going to have to post them manually, but, you know, that's totally okay to do. Um, this one was for a webinar. So a webinar, I wouldn't use, I don't use as many slides as I would for a paid service. This one's got like five to seven, I think, but it's very similar sort of process, but just dial down for a free offer. So, you know, what it is, what the challenge is, when the webinar's on, what they're going to learn, um, who she is, what the transformation is, and then the call to action with a spelling mistake. Awesome. <laughs> So typical for me to have spelling mistakes. <laughs> my brain just works too fast. Oh, that's why I have Grammarly installed on my laptop, but it still doesn't catch everything. Um, this is a client that had a coaching program. So um, it's an eight-week nutrition coaching program. So you, you're going to start to see the same process coming through here, right? So here's the offer. Here's the challenge. Here's what they get provided here's what she covers off in the program that went over two slides this is the outcome a testimonial and then are you ready with a call to action you know and here's the transformation in here you know so it follows the same process all of them they might be formatted a little bit differently you can definitely be creative in terms of how you format them out but they still follow a very similar process um, this was one for a digital product. So again, really simple with just three slides, uh, plant-based arthritis breakfast program ebook. We've got a spot for the link sticker on all three. One's just what it is, what's included, purchase here, right? So, you know, in terms of selling, again, the investment always has to, the investment in the content has to reflect the investment in the client has to put in. So for a $9 ebook, we're not going to do 10 story slides. Three is definitely enough. One could even be enough. A PDF download, you could easily do a one story slide for that. And I had three, obviously, for the other one I showed you. Um, 
you know, a program that might be a thousand dollar program, you would do 10 story slides for that, right? Because you're really going to want to flesh out what they're going to get for the value that they're going to invest. That's a bit, you know, that's definitely more of like a sales strategy overall as well. Um, I'm just checking the questions. Would you continue to use the exact same images? hundred percent. These are things that you can create, set and forget, schedule them in over and over again. It again, just embeds that messaging. Also makes life easier for you, right? You're not creating new content every single week. It's created once, it's shared over and over again. The other thing you can do as well, so let me go back and show you. So this one here for this client, I did these for all of her offers. So she had the power hour, a program, websites, branding, like she's got a whole business that work, work, is like coaching for dietitians. Um, and we did story slides and then we put them into an animated reel and also a carousel. So she can share the stories anytime. Um, she can share the carousel. She can share the reel and they can be shared again right? Like we wouldn't share the same carousel the next week, but in another few months, you could share it again. Like hundred percent, people aren't going to really notice. <laughs> to be honest, I think we stress too much that people notice that we've shared the same thing and we really need to not. I tell you, I tell you someone who does this really, really well. Um, I know you love them too, Shaz, is the digital picnic. Um, if you go and have a look at the digital picnic, um, they're a digital marketing agency and you will notice in their stories, if they're doing a workshop or a training or something, they will share the exact same image. They will share the same image on their feed for the same workshop over and over again. Why? Because it works. Because it's the touch points. If people are seeing the same thing over and over again, they're eventually going to take action. So just, you know, this isn't just something I've come up with myself. Um, it's definitely something um, that, it, it, that good marketers are doing, you know, and even people like the Digital Picnic. And they, like, you know, they're one of the most authentic sales based strategic people I know um, and if Cherie Clonan does it then it's good enough for me right like she's so so authentic in her sales process um, other hero content you can do is timetables so if you've got like timetable based um, a sort of program you can do that um, availability so I call that capacity based marketing so you can do like little slides with the calendar on it that says how many dates you've got available for the month or just a simple post I've got five spots available for you know new clients in whatever month it is um, workshops self-paced courses you know basically anything that you sell free or paid you can brand it up into this sort of stuff you can share over and over again or if you're doing webinars, you just template it in your Canva and change the date the next time. Like, you know, it doesn't really matter. If it's the same topic in your webinar, just use the same slides and just change the date and the time. Again, it's that, you know, repetition for emphasis um, with your clients. So the format for this, right? So a core offer. So this would be something that's paid. So this is a paid core offer, like a one-on-one -on -one service, a program, a course, something that people are investing money in. Um, and I would say, you know, this isn't for a $50 workshop. This isn't for a $9 ebook or something. You would do this process with something that would be your high level sort of offer. So something that's a decent investment. So the process that you go through, and this would be, you could actually use this as the exact 10 slides, right? So the introduction, so, you know, whatever the, pro, you know, for Shaz, it would be solid membership, you know, join my membership for soul led women in business. The challenge might be, you know, do you feel stuck as a, you know, healer, spiritual woman in business to be able to move your business forward or have the strategy or know what to do, whatever the words are Shaz uses, you know, would you like to feel this way? That's the outcome or the achieve, the thing that they would achieve. The offer, join soul, my solid membership. Here's what it does. Here's the inclusions. Here's what you get. So this is where she would list. You get the weekly calls. You get the monthly workshops. You get the co-working, like whatever sessions it is that you guys do in here. 
bonuses. I know there's a whole heap of bonuses you get when you join Solid as well. You'd list those off. You should do a slide with just her on it. Um, potentially a slide with a testimonial if there was enough space for it. Um, you know, I recommend for something that's a bit more high end, definitely have a testimonial. Um, and then your transformation statement. So the transformation statement is a little bit different to the, the outcome statement. So the transformation statement is like, are you ready to feel like? Are you ready to experience this? You know, are you ready to go from here to there? You know, so it's like, this is, they're gonna, it's really telling them how they're gonna feel afterwards. Um, just to kind of reiterate that now, if I was to go back to one of these. Um, are you ready to get unstuck and create a clear path to create success, you desire, the success you desire in your business, right? That's what that power hour session is to do, you know? So whatever the transformation is that your client gets. This one was ditch the self-doubt and embrace her. Her programs look at her. It's all about reclaiming yourself and you know it's health and nutrition but you know a lot of that like self-love and you know those things in it as well um you know so that transformation statement is really important I would say of all things the things you really need to focus on nailing your messaging for the challenge the outcome and the transformation statement they are the three slides you would need to focus on your messaging for the rest of it's pretty easy what are you selling? What do they get? What are the bonuses? Who are you? What someone said? And how do they access it? So if you go to do any of these yourself and you want feedback, I would say definitely, and you would, I'm sure you'd be open to it, Shaz. These mm -hmm. are the things you may want to pop in the group, your solo group and get some support with. Yes. And just so I tie this together with some of the resources that we have. I know I harp on about this document a lot, but what your clients currently have but don't want and what they want but don't have can be articulated from a real thorough completion of that document. That document gives you that wording because you will know what the challenges are. That's what they currently have that they don't want. The outcome and the transformational statement will come from what they want but don't have. So use the language in that document that you've brought up, you know, that comes through talking to your clients and really getting very, very like drill down on, you know, their want but don't have, have but don't want, because that is the key to nailing those points. I know I harp on about it, but right, how many times do we have to hear it? <laughs> yeah. And that's that's what we're doing here. Yeah. And look, I'm more than open as well, guys. If you go away from this and go to create your own set of slides, if you want to send them through to me and I can give you some feedback on it, I'm more than happy to, um, which might benefit the whole group as well, um, send that feedback on to Shaz to put into the group um, with along with your slides. And, you know, I can easily go, okay, on the outcome slide, I'd maybe word it a bit, it might be more powerful if you use these words or more powerful if you use those words. I'm not in your guys' group, so it's um, um, hard for me to do in there directly, but more I than- I can pop you in, Stace. I can pop you in the Facebook group if you wanted to, so, yeah. so people yeah, okay. can do that. If that's, if that's easier, I'm more than happy to give some feedback. If you just post, if Shaz adds me to the group and you guys pop the slides in the group, the reason I say that is everyone will learn from it and everyone will probably have trouble with the same thing. So if you pop them in the group and then tag me, I'm more than happy to give some feedback on it. I'm pretty much an open book like that. Um, so that's cool. Um, and now I just gave an example of like how you would kind of scale that back if it was a free offer. So I've given the example of a webinar. So you do an introduction slide, what's their challenge, what's their outcome, what's the webinar details, what are you going to talk about? Again, what's that transformation statement and the call to action? Now, the transformation statement with something like a webinar, what are the again, this is what I'm going to say is the things you need to work on with your messaging. What's the challenge? What's the outcome? What's the transformation? The transformation statement for a webinar needs to directly relate to the thing you're going to sell in it because you want them to buy the thing at the end. So you need to think about that too, what's your upsell at the end of your webinar. All right. Is that all as clear as mud now? Do you guys feel like really comfortable about going away and creating like 500 slides, <laughs> slides for all of your offers? 
I think that's really easy. I'm actually just looking at some of the templates as well at the moment inside the portal because I feel like some of these sorts of things that there might be some templates in there that you could all adapt. So, you know, and I'd be happy to create some and and add them to the bonuses so for, um, for you all as well. What I've done as a bonus is I've given you guys these so these slides that I've done here as a template um, and the webinar ones as well, I've given as a template. Um, the only thing I just ask, I'm happy to, and the reason I gave them to you as a template is so that you've actually got it in front of you to see, you know, this is the process and this is, you know, how you'd format it. These are obviously in my client's branding. So please rebrand them to your own branding. <laughs> Don't just reuse. Don't just reuse my client's branding, please. <laughs> but I trust you all not to do that. I know you've all got your own branding, and they don't mind. So I, they're totally cool with me doing that. Um, all right. So the next one is talking videos. Now, who 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 struggles with doing talking videos? Just be honest with me. Just be honest. Pop it in the chat box. I, I'd love to know if you struggle with them it particularly in stories what is it that you feel what what is it that challenges you around doing talking stories or talking video in general like what would be time and space as in you don't have the time to do it um yeah just like the random like I want to say something and then I'm like, oh, fuck, I look like shit. I'm just, you know, but I'm just thinking you just got to kind of, you just got to show up authentically, I feel, more yeah. and more and more. And I and can if you, feel. If you feel can, you look like crap, just use a filter. Like filters are your friend. Yeah, true. <laughs> I'm going to be true, perfectly true. honest. Um, I don't wear makeup most days, but, hey, there's a few good filters that fix that. <laughs> um, and look. True. You can delete them. They only last for 24 hours. So if it's not a perfectly branded image, it's okay. Um, Maria, can I follow... just, Sorry, I just yeah, wanted to yeah, ask. Yeah, please, yep. Yeah. You, you just hold it, right? You just keep going. Even when it clicks over, you just like, yeah, you just so keep talking. Stories will cut out once. Now you can do 60 seconds. Um, mm -hmm. I think you can only do one at a time and it'll cut out once you won't let you talk anymore. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's so you just you start have. again. Yep. So you just start a whole new story. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Or um, you would, or you would record a video and upload the video into the story, and it would separate out. No. Now okay. that stories are sixty seconds long, they have to be the length of that story. Uh, mm, okay. It's a bit frustrating. So yeah, I just recommend if you're going to talk in your stories, rather than film it outside them and then try and add it in, I film it inside them and then save it to my phone if I want to repurpose it. Okay. Mm. That makes sense. Thank yeah. you. Um, Maria, quality of messaging. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, Can I ask a question about that, Stacey? Yeah. I always felt that um, the mouth was out of sync with the words when I was doing it on a story. That's why I record it and then upload it to stories. But has that changed? Because I just don't, I Is haven't gone bit, back and tried. I have seen that with some, have, look, that sounds like a bit of a techie glitchy thing, um, which I don't, I don't have any huge workarounds for, except keep your app updated. <laughs> or delete and reinstall the app. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, look, I'll be honest, sometimes Instagram can get buggy just like every single app on the planet. Um, so always keep your app as up to date as possible. Some other things that really help to make sure that it's working properly is turn your phone on and off regularly as well. Like someone like me who's on my phone all the time, I have to find like once a week, I have to turn my phone off for like 10 minutes and then turn it back on again because I've got so many things open all the time. Things start to get really buggy. Um, and, you know. I've noticed with the iPhone 13 um, and some of the updates, I've got, you know, practically a brand new phone. Uh, the camera goes a little bit mm. berserk every now and again. It actually, yeah. it doesn't take photos and it won't focus. It kind of does this womp womp sort of thing. So, yeah, you do need to turn it right off every now and again to reset. But I did, I do know like Instagram can be buggy. Like last week I had a problem where if I was on the hands-free, it wouldn't turn my my camera around. 
So I had to turn it all off and reboot the whole thing. But look, you can absolutely film your talking videos out on your phone and then upload them to stories. That's totally fine. Just make sure they're only a minute long. That's all because now that stories are 60 seconds long, um, it may cut you off as well. And also um, just another thing with adding captions inside of like video, if you go to do a reel, that's a talking reel inside of Instagram, it will only do captions for 90 seconds, like the first 90 seconds. So if you've got a talking video that might be like, say, two to three minutes long, um, I would recommend giving, um, there's an app called, it's called Captions, I'm pretty sure. I use it all the time. Um, it's, yeah, it's just called Captions. You won't be able to see it. I'll have to send you an image of it once I get added into the group. Um, but, you know, you can add them in there as well. Um, and it, you know, pre-populates all your captions for you. Um, that's just a little, little bit of a trick because you just can't can't do it for too long on Instagram itself. Um, all right, so talking videos. So the key is you need to embrace them. Like, and, you know, we all don't like it. We feel like we look like crap some days, you know. I'm not saying talk on there every day. There's some days I don't want to be online. I am not interested in someone seeing my face. It's usually because I don't want to see anyone else's face on that day for some reason, right? So we're allowed to feel that way and it's okay to feel like that. But, you know, you don't have to be doled up, you know, grab a good filter if it makes you feel better. But definitely embracing talking to the camera is going to help you convert in your stories. So there's kind of three core things here. You can 100% 100% follow the same script as that branded hero content we just spoke about. Like you could literally just open up the camera. I'm running a webinar next week. If you're someone who feels like this, but wants to feel like that, this is what the webinar is going to do for you. It's called this. It's on this day at this time. Um, if you're ready for this change in your life, then, you know, click the link here and you can get registered. Like you could literally follow the same script and I think that going through the process of actually having that script is going to be really beneficial for you because you'll be able to then articulate that and repurpose that over into posts, even maybe onto your sales page to some degree. Um, look, if you've got a sales page already and it's got really good copy on it, I'd 100% recommend when you go to create these slides, have your sales page up. So you can have similar messaging from your sales page to your, your slides as well. Um, but having that script that really is only 60 to 90 seconds, really important for you because you're going to be able to then, you know, keep saying it over and over again. You might add different words in or have different inflections or focus on different things at different times, but it's still the same process. Um, definitely keep your stories to like 60 to 90 seconds and no waffle. Like now that stories are 60 seconds, Two, if you can't get out what you need to say in two stories frames, it probably should be a video would be my recommendation because less is more with stories at the moment. And particularly if you're trying to sell something in your stories, you've got to get to the point quickly. Um, people are not going to listen to 10 long minutes of talking to get to a, oh, by the way, I'm doing a workshop on this next week. Can you, you need to go to the link and buy it for $50. Like that's not going to work. We need to get to the point quickly. This is what I'm here to talk about. This is what I'm selling. This is what it's going to do for you. And this is, you know, how you can access it. Um, so that's, you know, one way you can do your talking videos is just follow that script. The other way with your talking videos is to go deeper into the core outcomes of each of your offers. Um, so I would say with each offer that you have, there's probably, there'd, there'd be at least two to three core outcomes for each, of, for each offer for your clients. Um, what would you say on that, Shaz? Sorry, I just was replying to a message. Oh, no. So I'm talking about talking videos and I'm saying oh. you can use the same script or you can go deeper into the core outcomes of each of your offers. And I would yeah. say each offer that each person has, has at least two to three core outcomes, which is going to yeah. be, it determines like, what do they come into it for? So like Solid, um, 
like what would you say the three the two to three core outcomes are for people in the membership uh confidence and foundations okay so if Shaz was going to do some stories on solid what she would do is go okay clarity and foundations clarity and foundations are the two core outcomes that people get from solid so they are the things that she's going to talk about in her stories so it might be like okay, we've got a masterclass coming up today on selling with stories. So, you know, we're going to be talking about, you know, getting the clarity of how do you actually do it and the strategy of how you're actually going to do it, right? So you're drilling down on those core outcomes and really repeating those core outcomes over and over again. Um, Also too, what are the steps of your process? So everyone has a process. I'm going to talk about this more in a minute. Everyone has a process to what they do. I know if you're a healer or you work in that like energetic space, it can be really hard to extrapolate what your process is, but we've all got one. Um, And it's really important to be able to articulate what the steps of your process is and what the steps of your, your process are. Because when someone works with you, that's what you're doing with them. Whether you do it in a one-to-one service and they're not physically there and you're coaching them, but you're going to have a process or a method that you use. Um, and it's really important that you're able to articulate what that method or that process is. So when you're doing your talking stories, you're going to be focusing on the core outcomes. So here's the one or two core things that they're going to get from this. So for Shaz, it's clarity and foundations but then what are the steps of that process so in the membership Shaz you've probably got like five pillars or something of things that you go through I'd say eight eight pillars pillars. yep so they're the Mm -hmm. steps of Sharon's process for solid so then there's eight steps that she could do talking stories on so we've already come up with eight steps two outcomes there's 10 talking stories right there on all of those things The third one is the transformation. So for solid, would you say your clients have one transformation or is there a couple of different ones, probably based on the outcomes, I'd say? Yeah, there's definitely a few. I I think definitely the key one is getting clear. Yeah. So again, then there's another one. So potentially like 11 talking videos on those things. So what I would recommend is go through each of your offers and really like, get clear and Shaz is good at this this is what she's here to help you guys do get really clear on what are this what's your method what is what are the steps in your process what are the core outcomes for each of your service offers and what is your client transformation now you can go and create a bunch of one to two minute videos you could get doled up put all your makeup on make yourself look really pretty and have them there in your in a folder that you can share over and over again Um, so long as they're within 60 seconds you can even schedule them on meta as long as they meet that requirement Um, or if you want to be a little bit more fluid with it um, you know you can just base it on your promotional rhythm right again if you've gone through and you've written down all of these steps that we spoke about we go back here if you've written all of this stuff down and you've got that there to refer back to you've gone through and you've really articulated the steps of your process, the core outcomes, the transformation. If you don't want to have to have, like don't want to be too rigid with it and you want to be a bit more free, if you're promoting your webinar and you're really clear on that messaging, it's going to be really easy for you to pick up a talking story and go, right, I'm going to talk about the first point that we're going to talk about on the webinar today on my stories and I'm just going to drill a little bit deeper into that, right? For, for Shaz, let's say you were doing a webinar for Solid, you might talk about clarity as one pillar on a webinar. So you might talk, that might be what she talks about one particular day. Um, so, you know, you can be as organised or as fluid with it as you need to be, but go through this Go through this process. It's not easy. It's actually really hard. <laughs> but once you get it and you've got it, you're good, you know. Um, so, yeah, some examples would be an on like an online program, your modules are your method, right? You've got eight modules, eight steps, outcome, and you could do an outcome for each module too, right? Even plus the outcomes of overall from the course. Bonuses, inclusions and benefits, what's included, core transformation. You might have, you know, three to five, you only have one to two. 
but again, you know, inclusions and bonuses are important as well. Like Shaz, you've got bonuses that you give out in solid, you know, let's say for argument's sake, they get a, a plant. What's one of the inclusions they get? Templates. Templates. So she might go, oh, you know what? I'm just using one of my templates today. This is actually a template from my solid membership. And I used it myself to create this because I'm going to send it to a new client. You know, it's really simple. It's really easeful. People go, oh, that's cool. I like that template. How do I get access to that? Oh, it's in their membership. Oh, I'll just have a look now. Right. You see? So I think what we're really good at doing is we're really good at sharing the value. We're just not very good at relating it back to how someone can pay you for it. So these processes are really trying to help you articulate things that you need to, to be able to move people through a sales process instead of just going, oh, look, I created this awesome template for a client. Instead of Shaz going, I created this document, I'm going to send it to a client now. She's going to go, oh, I've, I've got this template. It's in my solid membership. I used it myself today. Look how easy it is. I was able to create this beautiful document that I can now send off to a client. If you struggle with being able to, you know, put your offers or something in whatever the template's for into a, a, a systemized process or a template to give a document to give to someone, it's in my solid membership. Go and have a look at it here. So, you know, really making sure that you're giving the value of it, but you're also driving it back to how people can pay you. Because that's what we're here to do, right? You know, we're on social media so we can grow a business. So we need to treat social media like a business. Um, all right, tips. Promotional rhythm is the key. Keep them short and sweet. Use engagement stickers, a link sticker or DMs. Again, depending on how people buy from you. So you're sending them to a sales page or a conversation. Um, all right, I'm going to wrap this up shortly. We've only got one more thing to go through. So social proof is the last one. Um, Social proof, I split into three categories, testimonials, client stories, and your method. Um, most people would say social proof is only testimonials. I don't believe that. I think there's way more to social proof than a testimonial. Um, so I'm going to cover off testimonials real quick. A testimonial can be a branded content. Like it can just be a one slide that you share. So if you're doing a testimonial post for your feed, resize it into a story whack it on your stories. And again, you can keep those and you can schedule them whenever you want. And you've got that social proof going out on your stories feed consistently. Instead of it just being one post that gets lost in the feed algorithm, you can reuse that and get more traction out of that one testimonial. A client story is where you're sharing the transformation rather than them saying the word. So a testimonial would be when they've given you the words, a client story is where you're sharing it. So for example, Shaz might go, and it can be anonymous. And this is where client stories work really well because you don't necessarily have to get the words from the client, but you can share the story. So Shaz might go, oh, I just you know, got off a coaching call from the solid membership. And one of the girls in there was really struggling with X. So we talked through it and this was the recommendation that I gave to her. And this has now been the outcome. So you're talking through that, here's the challenge, here's what the process was, here's what the outcome was. Um, this is what we do every week in our coaching sessions in Solid. Here's the link, go and have a look at the membership, right? So it's, it's really the story coming from you um, rather than coming from them. This is what I need to do, but feels uncomfortable. What feels uncomfortable about it? I don't know. I don't know. And because I don't look at other people when they do it and go, ooh, I actually don't. Like I have, I'm, I'm neutral and usually I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But even like, I mean, I was a, I was a paid speaker this week for the first time on oh. a live stage, on a live Yay. stage paid that's speaker. So good. Um, yeah, a whole 150 bucks, Stace. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> hey but I'm, I'm it's more stoked, than zero <laughs> but I didn't even know I was getting paid so there you go <laughs> um but you know I think like even as I was getting ready I'm like I should be I should be telling people where I'm going and what I'm doing but there's something that just feel it's so weird like I have this strange block around it 
which is just so bizarre. Um, and, you know, same with client successes, just, you know, sort of jumping on and, and sharing that. Like there's so much I can share from our sessions in here, our coaching sessions in here, and also, you know, sessions one-to-one, but I just don't. It's weird. That, so that, that, do you feel like you're about. making it about you and not about them? Is that what you feel that you're doing? Maybe. Because a lot of people do. There's a lot of coaches out there that make a client's transformation them about Maybe. them. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. yes. Maybe so, that's what it is. So I would just say focus on the client transformation. It's not about you. It's 100% about them. But what you're doing is you're saying like, this is how you came across that transformation is I just jumped off a call in Solid. One of the girls was saying, and that, that's all you need to say. We just jumped off a, a coaching call in our Solid membership. One of the girls in there was having trouble with this. This is what we workshopped with her. And I'll update you on the outcome of it in a week or so. Or you might do it post, mm. post all of that. It might be Last week, we had a coaching call in Solid. This is what one of the girls was having a problem with. This is what we workshopped as a solution. She's tried it and this is what's happened. Mm. You know, this is what we do. We, you know, we do these calls once a week in the membership. Go over and have a look. So the, the intro and that CTA, they're only really one sentence each. Yeah. And you're making the rest of it is about the client story. And the reason they're powerful is that people want to see real life. They want to see... They want to see like an actual example of it working in real life, mm -hmm. but they also want to know your method. They want to see how do you help someone make that happen or what do you workshop with them? And I can see why it's icky because, and I see it all the time, a lot of coaches going, my client had, a, we've been working together for one week and she had a $500,000 yeah. launch. And I'm like, dude, that had nothing to do with you. <laughs> Yeah, it had nothing to do with you and everything to do with what she did before that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you definitely make it about them. Um, but, you know, you just add those little things at the beginning and the end and it definitely mm -hmm. helps. But it's the method is the thing that you're wanting to showcase. So what's the process you walk your clients through in the course, the coaching or the course? What's the process you complete for your client in a one-to-one -one service and what is the outcome of that so Shaz I know you've probably got heaps of resources in solid to help guys these guys with their method but I really highly encourage if you haven't written got this written down somewhere or done this work to articulate your process it's gonna it's really it's such a crucial part of the selling process and really important that you can articulate that because I'll tell you what in this current market, the, the reason people choose you is often going to come down to your process or your method. So in I think it's definitely become more, more important in 2022. Yeah. And it's, the reason it's for that more and more important. And the reason for that is there's heaps of other people out there selling the same thing, the same service and the same transformation. So when someone goes online, they're going to see five to 10 people selling the same, the same thing with the same transformation to someone with the same pain points and the same outcome. But what makes you different often is your method, right? Yes, your messaging, 100%. I know Shaz is really good at really drilling down on your messaging. So your messaging is a huge, crucial part of that that sets you apart but sometimes your method is what sets you apart as well and being able to articulate that because again that needs to be on your sales page it needs to be in your sales copy so doing that work is really really important so some examples of how you can share your method is like client statistics in a branded slide that you could you know reshare over and over again i do that with client social media analytics that works really well. People that love to see analytics enjoy seeing that. You could talk through it in a talking video, just like what I, you know, workshopped there before with Shaz. You could do a short video tutorial as well that might show your process, particularly like, you know, as a website designer or something like that. You could do like really short little snippet video tutorials um, or method slides, like even just this is my method. These are the five core, these are the eight pillars of solid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like some people love to see that because they want to know what are they going to learn and what are you going to do with them? 
Um, so really basically the key is just show your process as that sometimes will be the thing that people will buy because, you know, as I said, in this climate, with so many people selling the same product and outcome, sometimes, sometimes not all, it's not the whole part of the process. Your messaging's huge, your, you know, your offer, your positioning, all those things are important, but your process and your method are just as important as well. hundred um, percent. So my tips um, from that is repurpose plan and strategy so you need to have a sales strategy to uh, like if you don't have a sales strategy now you're not going to be able to execute it in stories so go back to basics if you don't have a sales strategy that's what Shaz is here to help you guys with um, plan 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 your promotional rhythm your content all of that um, in the social strategy and planning work book that I'm giving you guys I've got my process for that in there so that will help you and repurpose so you know you can do talking stories and download them and post them as a reel a few days later like you know it's okay to share the same content it's okay to say the same thing in different ways it's okay to do that it's actually more beneficial for you to do that because it embeds your message um, and will help you get more runs on the board long term um, Sure. All right. Um, I don't know why that's, I don't know why they're there. Okay. I'm going to remove those. <laughs> See, I messaged Chaz today and I said, I'm ready half an hour before and I've got slides in there that don't need to be there. All right. Um, I've got some bonuses for you guys today. So the social media strategy and content planning handbook. Um, I've popped all that this into a Google Drive. I've templated up some of those hero templates for you guys for the paid offer and for the webinar. Um, and for those of you that may want to outsource it, I do do this sort of content for clients as well. So I do have a little package, which I call offer highlights, um, which is branded templates for three of your core offers. So it's a set of story slides, carousel deck, an animated reel and an email header. It is the same graphics reformatted into each thing. Again, the reason for that is not to be lazy. The reason for that is to embed messaging of that offer. Um, so it, you've got all the hero slides and things that you can use over and over again. Um, it would be up to 10 slides, depends what your offers are. Like if you want to use three paid offers, then obviously they're going to be more slides. If you've got webinars, we can template that up. If you want to use a freebie, whichever is fine. My full price is 200, but for you guys, if you just email me and let me know that you're from Solid, I'll give you guys a discount on that. And that is it, guys. So Q&A. Always so bloody generous. Thank you, Stay, so much. I just always love listening to your presentations and I just always learn so much. Uh, I have a question. I'm going yes. to jump in first because I know right. if I don't get it out, then I'm going to forget. Yeah. Now, now I can I've see heard, everyone. <laughs> I've heard a variety of methods of how to do this over the years, but I know you always do it consistently and I know that I don't do it consistently. And that is on brand captioning in stories. Can you tell us your method? Do you have your color tile saved in your photos and added as a sticker and then grab the color from there is that what you do or can you tell us your method for that as in like with the when you add the captions yeah to like a slide or talking captions or both um I'm guessing a slide like if you were to add Say someone, um, say someone tagged you in a story and you wanted to reshare it and add your own caption so that your own caption stays on brand or even a caption, say you want to put some words over the top of a, a story video. Oh, you want them to be a specific colour? Yes. Yeah. So if, if the, so if the, you just have to use the little colour picker. So if, the colors are in the image that's already on there and you select the little color picker next to the colors you can just drag it onto whichever part of the image that has that color or um i i have and i recommend to do this is just you can do it in canva just have the, a little square tile that has your like four three to five or four brand colors on it and you can just drop that into your story and then use the As color sticker. picker yeah um, well, you have to drop it in as a sticker. 
not well you drop it in as a as you a, copy it yeah yeah so, you copy it and then you put it in so is that how you do it yeah yeah so, I just I've tried it before and then I'm just like it just seems like so much extra freaking around <laughs> it is. I wonder so, if there was a shorter cut That's unfortunately what I'm <laughs> not so what I usually recommend and then I mean I've got an iPhone so let's be I'm not sure what you do on a Samsung I'll be perfectly honest I'm not I'm an iPhone on Samsung all the way but um, I just have albums in my photos. Mm-hmm. So you can actually see some of my branded photos images in there. So yep. I've got like, if I want to do like some text-based stories where it's just text, I've got like little branded slides where it's just got a little image of me down the bottom and I can just put any text I want over the top. And I've just got those in folders in my phone. So I don't have to scroll through 500 million images on my camera roll. I can just go straight to that folder and that's where they are. So I would recommend, particularly if you're not going to schedule any of the, um, if you're not going to schedule any of your branded images, just create folders for them. And then you know exactly where they are. Otherwise you end up spending 45 minutes scrolling through. Yeah. I always favourite them, but I my recent brand shoot that I had done in August, I have got a folder for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's probably why it's taken me long before because I've always had it favorited, but it obviously eventually it goes further and further. I try and unfavorite things that I'm not using anymore. But yeah, that's that's annoying. Mm. Thank you. That's all right. Um, Rebecca, what do you need? What content? Is, oh, so I just need your branding um, and I just need to know what your offers are. So if you've got a sales page for them, I can usually extrapolate what I need to out of that um otherwise you know just a, a blurb on you know what the offer is how much it costs who's it for um what's the challenge what's the outcome what's the transformation uh, and look if you can't articulate that just whatever your words are and then you know I'll try and try and articulate it into something that makes will, will make sense for your audience just I'm sure Katja won't mind me it, sharing this but I've just done a lead magnet for Karcha and um, she's going to be doing a few lead magnets under Sh- after Sharon's recommendation um, and I'm going to help her set up a couple more and so it was like a energy basics was the pdf that we did and we just went through like what are her three core um, ways for people women to tap into their energy and I said to her like send me over your branding and then just you know, give me the dot points. What are the three things that we're putting in there? You know, blah, blah, blah. We went back and forth in email a little bit, but that process of putting that together, she now has a PDF that actually has a sales strategy in it, right? There's an introductory page that it introduces her. It explains why people need to tap into their energy, what that's going to do for them. It gives her three three points in it. And then it's got a CTA page at the back. Um, and it's simple, but it works, right? And it was just about, you know, really just you give me the blurb, I'll try and pull out of it as much as I can. But if you've got a sales page, even better. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Cool. Yeah. So if, if you guys are interested in that, um, you just shoot me through. Stacey Marie Coaching is my Instagram handle. My email, I'll just type it in here or just email me and just let me know you're from Solid. That's all you need to do. I keep things pretty simple in my neck of the woods. That's my email. Um, and I've put the slides and the templates and the guidebook into a Google Drive folder. Um, which Shaz can share with you guys. Um, it also has the other stuff from when I did the captions workshop as well um, in there too. Um, so that was still in my Google Drive. So I've just added everything else in there for you guys too. So that's got all that in there for you as well. So incredibly generous. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you all spend some time going through the Google Drive that Stacey's prepared for us. She also does have another presentation that's inside the portal um, under guest training. So if you haven't seen that, please do do go and check it out. I also dropped the YouTube link only because that's, I happen to have it open, Stace, because I sent it to a client yesterday about the um, 
the um, selling the podcast episode that we recorded oh, yeah, yeah, and I yeah, just happened yeah. to grab the YouTube link and it was still open on my tab um, because it's that helpful. It's a really great podcast episode. So go and have a listen to that. It's on the podcast or it's on, um, there's a YouTube there if you wanted to to listen to that as well. Yeah. And I think um, like obviously it's a lot of information in 90 minutes for you guys, but um, if Shads adds me to the group, then I'm... Yep. I'm an open book. Like I'm very uh, happy to give you guys feedback on anything um, and answer any questions. Just tag me. <laughs> so yeah. Otherwise I may not see it. So just tag they know me. <laughs> They know the tag rule. Yeah. And they know to tag again if they haven't had a response yes. within, you know, 48 hours, through, mm-hmm. through four days tops. Yeah. Um, I but always do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm very honest about the fact that my brain can only hold so much information. So if you do tag me and I still don't respond, just tag again. I will not be offended. I'll be grateful. <laughs> um, cool. I'm so Amazing. glad it's helpful. Go and cogitate on it, let it all percolate, and I'm sure you guys will come up with something else you want to ask me up in, in, a, in another week or so, so I'd say. Amazing. I've dropped Stacey's Instagram and her website in the chat as well. So if you're new here and you don't know Stacey, because there are quite a few people who who possibly wouldn't know Stacey, um, please do go follow her. Her stuff's amazing. Um, Stacey's also a great friend. So um, we, we got to hang out for a short little while last week when she was down at um, Darlington awesome. at the resort where I was work, where I work. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll get to, um, also catch up in January sometime, but, um, Stace, thank you so much. I love your work. Really appreciate how generous you are. Um, I know that I'm going to sign up for the, uh, that offer for sure. And I know lots of other people are saying, yeah, put me down. Um, so that's cool. such a generous I'd, I'd, offer. I'd love to do, I'd love to help you guys with that. Like if it's not something that you feel is your strength, then you know, I love, I love it. I just get such a kick out of making it look pretty and turning it into something that will work for you. So yeah, more than happy. Awesome. I Thanks think it comes down me. to bandwidth this time of year oh too. My God. It? Like it's just hundred percent. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's just really nice to have someone like we've done the work, we've prepared the sales page, we've got the offer, we're doing all the things. And then to go and create just a series of pretty templates is lovely if we've got the time and the bandwidth for it. But yeah. one of the things that I have talked about this week is that I'm struggling with more than once I've talked about this week is plugging into my creativity this time of year. Like I feel like creatively constipated and it's because I know that I haven't had that spaciousness to be able to create. So um We'll we'll put you we'll pay you to be in your happy creative bubble space. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm would I will accept that graciously, and I do really I do really enjoy it. Um, I just also want to say like another person that is um can be a resource for you too is Laurie just finished my social media makers training, which was Yay! a program to teach VAs how to become social media managers. So I know she's you know just plodding and kicking along but um you know this you know uh, that's someone in your group as well um you know and I'm all for promoting people that are already in this space too with you guys um you know she's done that training with me as well and we went through a lot of this stuff in that training didn't we Laurie yeah so awesome that's great Um, how do you please do yes um, I just want to add, Stacey is amazing. <laughs> I <Yes>. won't sweat. <laughs> but, um, yeah, she's amazing. Just the stuff that she was able to pull out, um, it just made me recognise and realise how easy it is to hand it over and just go, can you do this? And then I can concentrate on being with my clients and holding that space for them. And it's just, it's freaking gold. So mm. if you're on the fence, do it. <laughs> And um, Karcher, I actually put that lead magnet offer out as a as like a beta test and it was Karcher and another lady who is a spiritual guide. So it was interesting that the two girls were, um, you know, spiritual people and both of you said the same thing. So I delivered Amanda's to her last week and hers was like um, affirmation. It was like an affirmations book. Um, and again, she sent me this like five page Google document with all of this these words on it that were 
I think just stuff that came out of her head really. And I had to, I went through it and read it all and I pulled out, okay, this is the system. This is the process. And I put it in there and she goes, I would never have been able to do that. Like, I think mm. my brain works that way. Um, yes. I think from a sales perspective, you need to have that sometimes in it. Look, if you're doing it for yourself, it just means getting some feedback. Um, mm. If that's what you need to do, or if you outsource it, then, you know, you've got someone that can, that you need to have someone with that brain though. Um, so yeah, that that's a really great thing. You know, I was at um, the Coffs Coast Creative Industries is where I spoke at um, on the panel. But, you know, one of the really interesting things, there was a keynote speaker there who is an artist. He's, he's a sculpturist and has had sculptures at Sculptures by the Sea, um, as well as Vivid in Sydney and also the big sculpture one that they have on the Gold Coast. So he's he's pretty... He's done some pretty amazing things and he talked about the creative process of ideate, incubate, implement. And, you know, I think that that's the thing is we have different strengths. You know, some of us are great at ideating. You know, I'm great at ideating and incubating, but the implementation is not always my zone of genius. Like I often need support with that. So, you know, that's a perfect example of, you know, Amanda being able to like, ideate and incubate and then Stacey able to have those eyes where it's like yeah right here we go you know human design and 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 that is that that is playing to your strengths like I know you know I do I use both my masculine and my feminine energy but I definitely in times of crisis or when I get busy or I will revert to that more process driven masculine energy that's you know obviously freaking four decades of conditioning and all those things we could talk about that for another three days couldn't we but you know what I mean though right like I I will gravitate to those things and so I need people like Karcha to help me tap back into my energy when I know I'm getting to that point because that's how I'm wired so Mm -hmm. you know it's um it's been really nice to create those things for those people because um, it's something that I find really easy to do, but I know Katra really struggled with. So being able to show her this is your method now, she's like, oh, my God, it's great, you know. So so amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Stace, I might get you to pop a post in the Facebook group um, of that offer um, yes. specifically just so um, people have that. We will have the link in the portal when we upload this video um so yeah make sure you grab your hands on that but please do put the post in the facebook group because the facebook group has financial and non-financial members of solid so um so there's a lot of people who aren't on this call that are still part of the solid community who i'm happy you know for them to also see and have access to such a great offer as well if you're happy for that yeah no worries of course we'd love to do that um, that assistant with the method is different to the other offers. Was that a different offer, the lead magnet offer? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I did for Karcher was set up her lead magnet. So that was an ebook with an email sequence. But the um, the 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 offer template, like the offer templates, is just for stories. So that's like stories, templates, post templates, and a reel. But I do those other things as well. If you're thinking about help with other things, just shoot me an email. Let me know what you're thinking of and I'll we can have a chat. Yeah. And are okay. those offers all on your website, Stace, if people no. want to check that out? <laughs> I didn't think so. That's why I asked. No, I no, no they, they are not. not. No, they are no, not on my website because a, you don't need web, them to be. <laughs> my web my website is um an an area of extreme need of um overhauling right now. <laughs> And has had not a lot of love. So um, please feel free to go look at my website, but um, please, please shoot me an email too. <laughs> yep. Amazing. I'm sorry. I, I just have to be honest about that. It's just no, we love the it's, honesty. It's, we, we love the honesty. Sometimes we don't, we don't always right. have it every ball perfectly in the air balanced, do we? And I like... just hired a new team member. So I am hoping that those things will now start to get done as we talk about, you know, in, hiring for our own for the strengths that we don't have mm-hmm. yeah amazing stace thanks so much thank um, you anyway great to see you guys again all questions being had i'm assuming 
Um, thanks so much, Stace. We look forward to seeing you in the Facebook group. Yes. Appreciate your work. Appreciate awesome. your time. Thanks so much. No worries. See you guys.